When you look at Ichiro's NPB trophy case, it is chock full. Seven batting titles, seven gold gloves, seven best nines, five hit king awards, five OBP king awards, an RBI king award, a stolen base king award, 10 player of the month awards, and three straight PL MVPs. In fact, there are really only three major awards that are missing. Ichiro never won Rookie of the Year, thanks to him not breaking out until his third season. He never won a Home Run King Award, thanks to his batting approach, though he did come close in 1995. And he didn't win Japan Series MVP. Granted, thanks to the Lions, Hawks, and Swallows, he only had one chance to win the award. But still, it remains a noticeable hole in his trophy cabinet. So, who won that award in 1996? I'm Troy Neal of the Huntsville Stars. To win in baseball, I have to be in control of my game. To win in life, you have to be in control of yourself. And if you do drugs, you're out of control, and you lose. Be a winner, don't do drugs. Neil was born in Freeport, Texas, and he grew up playing basketball, not baseball. To be fair, he was huge, standing at 6 foot 4 or 193 centimeters and weighing about 210 pounds, which is about 95 kilograms. Neil fit right in on the court. In fact, he didn't start playing organized baseball until he was 20 years old. However, he was good enough that he was able to transfer to Howard College from Texas A&M to play baseball. He got drafted by Cleveland in the ninth round of the 1986 draft, and after being traded to the A's in 1991, he made his MLB debut in 1992, and was good enough to get a full-time spot in 93. Neil wasn't just good, he was a well above average hitter in his two seasons in Oakland. During that time, he and his first wife went through their first divorce. Now, I'm only going off Texas public records here, but it appears that they made up and got remarried in California. Regardless, in 1995, he and teammate Doug Jennings signed with the Oryx Blue Wave to replace Ty Ganey and Francisco Cabrera. This was a coup for Oryx. Neil wasn't just some quadruple-A player looking for a shot at making money. He was a legitimate major league talent. And they promoted the hell out of the signing because of it. Neil loved it in Japan. Not only was he making good money, but he was also fascinated by Japanese baseball culture and Japanese culture in general. He made fast friends with Ichiro and Sotoguchi, and pictures of them goofing off together aren't hard to find. In his first season in 1995, he hit the second most homers in Pacific League, and won a Best 9 award. In 1996, he'd win the PL Home Run and RBI King awards, and another Best 9 award, and the aforementioned Japan Series MVP. His 1997 would be just as good, as he led the blue wave in every category Ichiro didn't. However, playing in Japan would put a strain on the relationship with his wife, and they got divorced a second time, this time for good, in early 1998. Neil had since signed with the Angels, and was assigned to their AAA affiliate in Vancouver. Then a judge in Texas dropped a bombshell. They ordered him to pay $5,000 a month in child support for his two kids. Neil didn't want to pay that much money. And after asking his new girlfriend if it was okay, he called up the Blue Wave and asked if there was still a spot for him. Orcs took him back without a second thought and by May, he was back in the Navy in gold, now with a new number, 99, as his old number, 16, was now taken by Tomiya Kawaguchi. Neil and his girlfriend would decide to live in Japan full-time, as Troy continued to ignore the obligations to his ex-wife. Neil and his new girlfriend would even get married at Hadomato Stadium in 1999. Neil would keep up solid production as Oryx's DH, but after a disappointing 2000 season, he announced his retirement from NPB and got a big send-off in his retirement game from Blue Wave fans, ignorant to what he was up to. And the team thanked him graciously for his time with the club. So, what can he do now? Well, since KBO had recently opened itself up to foreign players, Neil had no problem finding work. He signed with the Seoul Doosan Bears and played... terribly. He had enough experience that the Bears didn't just want to cut him, but after he got into a bar fight and was arrested for assault, he was cut. So, what now? Well, Neil had saved up quite a bit of money during his career. He could go back to the States, pay what he owed, and possibly broker a deal with his ex-wife to get the rest of it cancelled, 
especially now that he didn't have a steady income and his ex-wife had possibly remarried, at least according to Texas records. But no, that would be too logical. He and his second wife would buy a 16-acre island in Vanuatu and would run a resort out of it. Why Vanuatu of all places? Well, they didn't have an extradition treaty with the US, so he could sit pretty for five years, get citizenship there, and never have to pay his ex-wife a cent. By 2005, Neil got indicted by a Texas grand jury for fleeing the country to avoid paying child support. Great job, guys. Only took you seven years. But like I said earlier, they couldn't do anything about it as long as Neil was on Vanuatu. But it did stop the Vanuatu government from ever considering giving him a passport. When his passport expired in 2008, Neil would be deported from Vanuatu and would be arrested as soon as he stepped off the plane at LAX. Now he would finally face a judge, owing nearly $800,000 in child support and staring down a possible sentence of two years in prison for fleeing to Japan, and then Korea, and then Vanuatu to avoid paying child support. However, somehow, some way, he managed to cut a deal. Neil would take the stand to argue that he had no way of paying back the money owed as he basically had nothing in liquid assets, and while selling his island would cover some of the initial costs, it would be a time-consuming process and might not leave him with enough to cover the continued child support costs as one of his two kids still hadn't turned 18. So he and his ex-wife managed to cut a deal. While we don't know most of the details of it, we do know that he ended up paying her a lump sum of $116,000. This is only about a third of what he owed her before interest. He also pled guilty to charges and received probation instead of jail time. The indictment in 2005 also spoiled his reputation in Japan. He'd been a fan favorite, the gaijin slugger who'd stayed, one of Ogi's miracles for whatever that's worth. But the truth of why he'd stayed had been revealed, and his reputation was tanked. When the 1996 Blue Waver brought up, many focus on Ichiro's god tier season. Sotokuchi's stellar defense, DJ's clutch hitting, the shutdown trio of Koji Noda, Nobuyuki Hoshino, and Willie Frazier, and the brilliance of closer Masafumi Hirai. But the man who arguably did the second most to secure them that championship is little more than a footnote in the official tellings. And it's all his own fault. Troy Neal had it all. He played baseball for a living, in a country he'd grown to love and adopt as his second home. But thanks to his own selfishness and a petty grudge, he lost it. I don't want to make this some big lesson or anything, but if there's one thing you can take away from this, it should be the immortal words of Stephen Hare. Everybody should treat each other with kindness. And don't be a dick! Big shout out to my patrons, Mentasmic, Juan Jose Sanchez Bracamontes, and Anthony Pang. If you want to join the ranks, link will be in the description. That being said, I've been Gaijin Baseball. Hope y'all are having a wonderful one, and pay your child support. Peace.